All right, learning target five. Uh, for unit three, we have decided to uh, not have you construct dot, dot plots and histograms, but instead to interpret. Um, and why we want to do that is because we, we feel like constructing is pretty basic, but being able to talk about the data within um, a, a graphical organizer or, some, or a dot plot or a histogram or a box plot um, is, is important. It's a valuable skill. So that's what we're really going to focus here on in this video and in this lesson. Um, the first one is just a dot plot, okay? We have a data set here, and what it, ha what it gives us is a number line, and basically you put a dot over the number um, where your data set has. So we have two 60s, we have two 60s, okay? We have um, not every number is given on the line. It can give every number, but you can see here they, um, they kind of count by fours, okay? Um, but each dot, if we had like a 61, it would go here. Each dot is given um, where it is. So these are a bunch of pulse rates um, for maybe a class or just a set of seven people. Um, or maybe it's the same person over doing some different stuff. Um, so yeah, maybe that's, that's probably what it is. But we can t look at the spread of this data. It just kind of spreads it out as a visual spread of the data. That's what's nice about a dot plot. Uh, it's good for small sets of data. You can probably tell that if we had, instead of seven pieces of data, if we had 107 pieces of data, that would be pretty tedious and cumbersome to really see that data over everything. So what we do is we transition to a histogram. Okay, and what a histogram does is it's basically a line plot, but we put the line, or we put the dots or whatever in intervals. So instead of having um, this number here, three, instead of having one number at three, one dot at three, we have an interval from zero to five that gives us, and we say the, the count in that interval was one, because there's only one number between zero and five, okay? There are two numbers between 20 and 25, and if we look at the data set, we can see that's 24 and 25, or actually that would be 21 and 25. 25 would be in the next group. That's the one number here. Uh, so this is better for bigger data sets. Um, and today I'm just going to kind of give you an inter introduction to the different types of representation. And then we'll talk about what uh, the spread and the, the look of the graphs can, can tell about us or tell us about the data. Right now we're looking at quality ratings of regular potato chips. So this is what people or maybe experts think about different types of potato chips. So each rating goes with a different type of potato chip. Uh, obviously this one was given a very poor rating. They must taste terrible. These two were given high ratings. Um, but we can see like something we would say here is most of the potato chips were ranged or were given a rating from 30 to 50. Um, so we can we can make some generalizations with histograms. That's why they're nice. nice. Um, then we transition the difference between a histogram and a bar graph, which you guys have probably seen a lot of bar graphs, there actually is a dis distance or a difference. A bar graph shows categories. So instead of numerical intervals down here, we have categories. So here we have the number of birthdays in each month, and the category is in January, in February, in March, and in April. Um, so this is more categorical data um, where you have, you don't have uh, numbers, you don't have intervals, um, like our ratings had a numerical value to them. This is more when is your birthday. Okay, so we'll look, look at some more examples of those as well. That's the difference between a histogram and a bar graph. Bar, gra or bar graphs can also show us data. We can answer questions like, um, or, I mean, if this is a class, we can talk about maybe how, why so many people were born in January and February. Maybe we're just looking at the spring here. I don't know why we're not looking at the whole year. But um, we'll get into that part of the stuff in class. This is just an introduction. What I want to spend my mo the most time on is box plots because I think they are extremely interesting and they can show data in, in multiple different ways. Um, and so we've talked about the five number summary, okay? And a box plot is literally just a visual representation of that five number summary. The bottom number 
or the bottom whisker, we call these two whiskers. Um, the first whisker starts at the minimum. The last whisker starts or ends at the maximum. And then this box in here starts at the first quartile and ends at the third quartile with a line in where the median is, okay? Any outliers we have are usually represented by a little star outside of the box plot so that we don't have, um, so that our whiskers aren't extremely long, okay? And so if you see a really long whisker like this without outliers there, that means that our data is spread out. Like we might have a couple pieces of data here and a couple here and a couple here. It's pretty evenly spread. This whisker would not be so long. If this whisker had one piece of data right here and then the rest of the data was here, then our whisker would end here and we just have a star here for this outlier. So the fact that we have this whisker tells us that there's a lot of data spread out throughout there. What happens here is that since median and first quartile are literally just halves and then halves of halves, what happens is we can talk about percentages. There is 25% of our data in this whisker, okay? So if we have 100 pieces of data, 25 of those pieces of data are in this whisker, live between the minimum and the first quartile. 25% lies between the first quartile and the me median. 25% lies between the median and the third quartile, and then the final 25% lies between the maximum and the third quartile. What we usually look at is this middle 50%, okay? This middle 50% usually tells us a lot about our data. A nice thing about box plots is they, they tell us where our data clumps, and where our data spreads. Like here, even though this little whisker is so much smaller than this whisker, 25% of the data is in this whisker, and 25% of the data is in this whisker, okay? So it's interesting to see long whiskers versus short whiskers, big boxes versus small boxes, a median that's really close to the data. So what this is telling me about these point spreads is that this 50% of the data was pretty clumped together. I mean, if there are 100 pieces of data in this, 50 of them lie between this value and this value because that's where our inner core, that's, where, that's our minimum to our median. So that was the middle number is right here. And then the rest, this 50% of the data was pretty spread out. I mean, this is the median, this is the middle number, and this is our highest number, and everything's pretty spread out between there especially that last, that 75% or that last 25% there, that's, real, that's a real big spread. So we'll look at more box plots and be able to analyze what does this mean about the data and, and I just think they're really interesting. So we'll get into that quite a bit. Before class, and since I like box plots, the before class problem is about box plots. Um, these box plots summarize the final test scores for two of Mrs. Werner's classes. Um, which of her classes had the greater range of scores, which had the greater IQR, and in which class did the greatest fraction, okay, did the greatest fraction or percent, if you want to write that down, or percent of students score above 80%, okay? Which one? That's kind of a trick question, okay? So see if you can do that for class. 